KFA today uh, from Lower Manhattan, just uh, adjacent to Liberty Harbor. If you're watching on the AFA channel, it's kind of a messy, cloudy, barely can see uh, Lady Liberty uh, today, but that's uh, the kind of day it is. It's a spring day, got lots of rain, kind of looks like Ireland around here. Uh, <laughs> Gavin McCullough, glad to be with you. 888-589-8840, 888 uh, The president said so the uh, night of the Super Bowl. Do you remember this? There were some boneheaded decisions boneheaded out, of, decision. out of a But no office. mass corruption. Not even mass corruption, not even a smidgen of corruption. Obviously. Okay. And, right. And, and, and I'm making clear now that when I, the activity in Cincinnati, because it had been reported already when I answered that question, was very specifically about, as I just said, uh, line IRS employees in Cincinnati improperly scrutinizing 501c4 organizations by using words like Tea Party in quotes and Patriot. Employees in Cincinnati. All right. So that was uh, from uh, Fox News last night. Uh, Brett Baer and the panel took it on for a segment. And uh, the interesting thing about uh, those two quotes is that uh, that's the meme that the administration gave us over and over again, that the IRS, there wasn't anything political about it, that what it actually was, uh, was just an honest mistake. They just made a mistake. Uh, they didn't mean to uh, target uh, Tea Party groups. They just, it was just a mistake. They just did it. Well, Catherine, uh, Mary Catherine Hamm, at hotair.com, uh, filed late last night, 921 is when she filed the story, writes that uh, not only is there, um, is there a, 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 dis, a, a contradiction in where the investigations were taking place, and again, in that same Super Bowl interview, the president says to Bill O'Reilly, these were rogue guys, it was in Cincinnati, uh, they, were, uh, they were confused, they had the wrong language. By the way, if it was an honest mistake, why did they have to be rogue? Anybody ever think about that? Honestly, if it's if it's an honest mistake, then why would they be considered rogue? It, they would only be considered rogue if they were doing something wrong, right? So why would they be rogue if it was an honest mistake? They just if it was an honest mistake, it was just a mistake. They had the wrong criteria. They put in the wrong search terms, and when they brought up the things, it just brought up Tea Party ones. If that's if that's if it was an honest mistake, that's what it was. So how could it be rogue people making an honest mistake? Rogue people do things off book on purpose. Honest mistakes simply occur because someone had the wrong criteria, wrong filter, wrong situation. How, how can something be both wrong and mistake, uh, rogue and mistaken? 888-589-8840. I'm really curious as to what your thoughts are about that. 888-589-8840. Anyway, um, so the quote from the email that's kind of the, the, the most significant one came from the uh, email of Mr. Stephen Grudzinski, Grudnitsky, an IRS lawyer, out of D.C., and he was talking to the people in Cincinnati that were handling Tea Party applications, and this is what the uh, email says. And friends, remember this. We would not know this if the Judicial Watch organization had not gone and gotten a Freedom of Information Act uh, request for these materials. Hey, and they were, they were put down, they were delayed, they were told all these different things about why they were, this was a stupid thing to be doing and all the rest of it. We, wouldn't, we would still not know this. But in the emails that, that were forced to be made public in the Freedom of Information Act request was the one that has this quote in it. Grudnitsky worked in the IRS headquarters exempt organization's technical unit and he was responding to Ms. Paz, who worked in the Cincinnati office. I'm sorry, he's, she's re, he's responding to Ms. Paz, who also works out of D.C., uh, as the director of the IRS Rulings and Agreements Division. And this was concerning the exempt uh, organization's office in Cincinnati. He says to Holly Paz, we're working the Tea Party applications in coordination with Cincy. We are developing a few applications here in D.C. and providing copies of our development letters with the agent to use as examples in the development of future Tea Party cases. 
Now, this wasn't, we were told it wasn't going to be political. We were told this wasn't political. We were told there wasn't actual targeting. They just got the wrong criteria mixed up on the computer screen. That's all. It just, it just it was just a mistake. How could it be a mistake if the email says, we're doing this to provide copies of the letters, i.e. a template, for the offices to use with agents, assuming that the agents are going to go do work in future cases, with future with the development of future Tea Party cases. No, not a smidgen of corruption, Bill O'Reilly. It wasn't political, and it wasn't Washington, D.C. It was just those rogue agents making mistakes in Cincinnati. Isn't this a rather significant... Do you believe that this is a rather significant smoking gun? I'm curious. Uh, then the Blaze, Glenn Beck's website, quotes one of the 2010 emails where uh, Thomas, again, she's the former director of the uh, Cincinnati office, instructed a colleague the following, let Washington know about this potentially politically embarrassing case involving a Tea Party organization. Recent media attention to this type of organization indicates to me that this is a high-profile case. In addition to 501c4 typical legislative act activities, application indicates possible future political candidate support, the memo added. The emails pertain to scrutiny of Tea Party groups over two election cycles in 2010 and 2012. Some of them are the same emails released to Congress, but without redactions. And you can actually go and read the whole batch of them on the uh, site where this uh, story is posted at hotair.com. Uh, Mary, Mary Catherine Hamm then adds, They also include some lovely back and forth between Senator Carl Levin and the IRS about how to best use the IRS's power to target conservative groups because democracy. So you've got some emails from a sitting U.S. senator talking to the IRS about how to best use the IRS's power to target conservative groups. This is all in black and white. It's all in the email chain. She adds, as the 2012 presidential election drew nearer, Levin sent a series of letters to the IRS intensifying his campaign against predominantly conservative nonprofit groups. September 27, 2012. Levin asked for copies of the answers to IRS exemption application question 15, a question about planned expenditures from four specific groups, Crossroads Grassroots Policy Strategies, Priorities USA, Americans for Prosperity, and the Patriot Majority USA. That's on September 27. On October 17th, same year, um, someone named Miller, who's Miller, One of the officials at the IRS, I'm assuming, uh, informs Levin, as discussed in our previous responses dated June 4 and August 24, the IRS cannot legally disclose whether the organizations on your list have applied for tax exemptions unless and until such application is approved. Miller, however, then informs Levin that the Americans for Prosperity and Patriot Majority have been approved, but that the IRS has no records for Crossroads or Priorities USA. October 23rd, six days later. Levin writes to again express his dissatisfaction with the IRS handling of social welfare organizations, insisting that IRS guidance misinterprets the law by allowing political activity. He again demands an answer as to whether the four organizations he listed in his previous letter were primarily engaged in the promotion of social welfare. He also seeks copies of the tax-exempt revocation letters sent due to C4 political activities, as well as statistics on how many C4s have been notified that they may have been in violation. Then in perhaps what Mary Catherine Ham says, in perhaps the most revealing letter from the IRS to Levin on June 4, uh, June 4, 2012, takes 16 pages to explain to the senator what IRS regulations and policies may and may not be used to evaluate political groups and assures him that the agency has considerable leeway in picking and choosing which groups would be subject to additional scrutiny. Friends, they're confessing to the whole thing in their own emails. They're confessing to, this is, this is all there. There is no standard questionnaire used to obtain information about political activities, although there is a template 
development letter that describes the general information on the case development processes. The letter does not specify the information to be requested from any particular organization. Consequently, revenue agents prepare individualized questions and requests for documents relevant to the application. Now, last night on Special Report, the, where we played that uh, clip for you, um, Steve Hayes ran down all the ways that the information refutes everything the White House claims uh, stood for. Kirsten Powers, a Democrat on the panel last night, suggested maybe Congress should just file FOIAs instead of requesting documents for the most transparent administration in history. <laughs> and uh, Krauthammer called uh, the administration liars. And Mary Catherine says, now to paraphrase Krauthammer, will the press cover it? After all, it's been more than two years, dude. Now, we started a little over a year ago having this revealed um, in the spring of last year. Uh, the president said, uh, let me be clear, I found out the same way most of the American people did. I was watching the news, and then it came across my screen, and I said, oh, my goodness. Their own series of emails demonstrate their two primary claims are not true. It was coordinated out of Washington, D.C., unless these people are just lying themselves. But why would you lie to make yourself guilty if you had not done it? Number one, they, they lied to uh, about whether or not it was from D.C. And the entire crux of this not being a political witch hunt completely now verified to be anything but the case. You have senators pressuring the IRS to delay and to give more scrutiny to these groups. And you've got the IRS people saying, look, uh, we, we've developed these, uh, these letters and these uh, protocols and these methods to uh, take longer with these groups than uh, we've taken in the past. And that's why I focus on the family and Dr. Dobson. I'm sorry, uh, family talk with Dr. Dobson. That's why he was still waiting some three years after originally applying. And there were a number of, you know, organizations that kept getting delayed. 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840. Let's go to the phones because there's a lot of you that want to weigh in, and I see you and I want to make sure that you're able to uh, chat with us today. Let's go to Jewel in Jackson, Tennessee. Hi, Jewel. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, Yes, sir. Um, I hope people will please listen to this. I don't usually share things like this with people because the talent the Lord has given me, but I've buried it. Um, uh, this, I had a dream the night before this General Petraeus thing was exposed, and the night before, in this dream, I was in a small oval building, and I was being forced out of this oval building by snake heads. I had a shovel in my hand, and I would chop off the head of one snake, and another head would, would rear its head. And then I would continue doing this, and each time I did this, another snakehead would, re- would resurface. Then a man appeared alongside of me, and he was doing the same thing. I turned around and I looked in this field, and in this field there was miles and miles and miles of shovels. What the Lord showed me, that he was showing me, that these snakeheads symbolize different heads of government. And every time one is exposed... There's going to be another one that rear its head because they are all in on it together, from the government to the IRS to Benghazi, all this that has been covered up. The shovel is dirt to be dug up. The Mm. miles and miles of shovels was symbolizing all the dirt that needs to be dug up and exposed. Now, I hope people hear that, accept it, and... God cares about what's happening in this country. We need well, to be- remind God. I believe that, Jewel, and I, uh, I, I don't uh, think you your dream is weird at all. I, I'm sorry that uh, other people uh, may have, I, I don't know if it means what you're saying, but it, it could. I mean, 
Uh, I don't have anything against it meaning what you're saying that it means. 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840. I started the show and ended yesterday's with uh, kind of the same soliloquy. Uh, Why hasn't Susan Rice resigned, if you want to talk about that? Uh, If you want to talk about uh, this new information that demonstrates uh, 100% in the administration's own emails and their own words that uh, they did target conservatives, that they did operate it from D.C., and that it wasn't some rogue people making mistakes in Cincinnati. Uh, rogue people making mistakes in Cincinnati would be uh, uh, self-contradictory anyway. How can you be both rogue and mistaken? If it's a mistake, you're not being rogue, is my point. 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. Let's go to, uh, let's go to David in Lafayette, Indiana. Hi, David. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. Pleasure talking to you, Kevin. Uh, uh, one thing I've seen with all this is um, representatives, senators, uh, Susan Rice, all of them, they're all liars. They're all evil. They sit back and laugh at us when this stuff happens, and they're, they're basically like a bunch of guys sit uh, at the yacht club, and they're, they're laughing at the, the lower peons like us. That the more we complain, the more they laugh, and... I think, uh, me as a Christian personally, since the IRS has lied and deceived us, and also uh, it, back in the 1916, they were illegally established. And the tax David, I'm, I'm, I'm short on time. I'm going to have to put you on hold and come back to you after the break. Uh, Kevin McCullough, glad to have you with us. It is uh, AFA Today on AFR Talk. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 